Nintendo Pulse, episode number 31. This episode of the Nintendo Pulse podcast is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces. All right, everybody, and welcome to the Nintendo Pulse podcast, episode number 31. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison, and joining me and lounging oh, man. like a lounge lizard, Edgar First. How's it going, guys? This is going to be, uh, might be the last time I sell this captain's chair, so I'm making the use of it. I'm selling, this, is, this has been in the second bedroom for a bit, uh, and there's not going to be space for it, so I'm selling it, and I think I have a potential buyer, so I'm enjoying the last few days I have with it. Nice. Well, that, yeah, that's a good way to get it. Awesome. This is the kind of chair that cradles you. It looks pretty comfortable. Oh, man, it's great. I have my feet up. Nice. And I don't care because it's being sold. So I, it's uh, it's actually very comfortable. So you're eating like uh, egg salad sandwiches on it and oh, tuna yeah. fish tuna and fish, all that lots stuff. Of tuna fish. Oh, that's good. Mayonnaise. Uh, <laughs> I've got the mayo. <laughs> I like to hear it. That's uh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, how What's you been, going? my friend? Uh, good. How are you? What's going on with you guys? <clears throat> Not much. Getting over a cold. I mean, oh, dude, never have kids. They destroy you. It is. It's not even funny. Like they come home with a with a sore throat, and then I have a sore throat for like five days. It it just What's up with that, or maybe maybe your immune system is just weak. It's not necessarily the kids. Uh, it could be but that it's the fact that they run you ragged. Maybe I have to go like eat dirt like they do. Apparently, like go grab some mud and just shove it in my mouth. That is their secret to their success. That's that's how kids. That's that's how they're going to destroy us all. They're going to eat yeah. dirt, get super like immune powers. And then they're just going to take us over. Each other, right? That's what they do. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're like little monkeys. So that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, um, trying to make, make my sound sound okay. I, I got a new mixer, man. And it, I don't know. I don't know yet. It's, I don't think it's dialed in perfectly, but uh, you'll have to let me know if I sound okay. So far, so good. Yeah. All I right. like it. Yeah, not bad. Cool. Let's get into the show. Uh, we just want to mention that we're a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Find other shows like this one over at techpodcast.com. And uh, just one little quick announcement before we get into the rest of the show. Um, just a reminder that we have the forums. Uh, they're new and they're set up over at vgpodcast.com slash forums. And uh, we actually have uh, a few people over there talking and, and chatting it up. So, um, yeah, head on over. Uh, we're going to be running some contests. Uh, I think um, during the month of May, I want to give away a bunch of iTunes cards. So uh, get over there, create an account, get chatting, create uh, create some threads, get talking in the ones that already exist. And uh, we'll see uh, we'll see where we go from there. But uh, well, and thanks for the subtle hint. By sending me the link to the forums, by the way. Yeah, you, you said you were going to sign in, and then you didn't. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to send him the link because yeah, uh, very subtle. Edgar Edgar forgets a little bit yeah. sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'll be signing in. How's uh, how's traffic on the forums, by the way? Uh, it's slow ish. I mean, I mean, it's new. The nice thing is that um, whenever a new post goes up at VGPodcast.com and someone goes down and looks at the comments form, it creates a thread. Um, in, in the forums and then someone can just uh, if you comment on the post it actually places that comment right into the forum so it's gonna it's gonna keep uh keep the conversation going which is uh which is a good thing i think oh very cool yes 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 this is my super uh if you guys could see it's my super healthy drink i was like what is it is that like it's like celery oh. apple and other delicious stuff it looks like the slime they dropped on people and you can't it doesn't do that on look television. good and i don't, and look at the crust that developed on the top oh that's gross no, it's pretty gnarly, right? That's where the cancer is, <laughs> and that stuff. That's why I'm not drinking from that side. <laughs> okay, well, uh, what do you say we get into the show? Yeah, let's do it, dude. All right, man. Edgar, what you been playing? Dude, uh, more 3DS, finally. Um, since I've actually had a little bit more time at home, been playing some more Pushmo. That game is just great. Uh. Pushmo is just a, such a well-designed game. Um, I started getting that because I, I wanted to put the Samurai Swords... Uh, Sakura Samurai down for a bit, um, and I'm still debating on whether to pick up Spirited Camera or not. Uh, I, every review I said is a review I've read so far is like this game has a lot of potential, but ha- but it didn't <clears throat> quite quite um, deliver on right. its on its potential. So I'm kind of curious just to play it and see where how bad it falls on its face. Um, because I think it'd still be a neat experience. Maybe not a good gameplay experience, but just a good, a good experience overall. Right. Um, other than that, uh, not too much. So just uh, just some Pushmo. 
Uh, I've been inviting the family and friends over for Dance Central 2. That's becoming like a really hot game around here. Really? Dance Central 2 is just so fun. I, I've been, I've actually been thinking of picking up a Kinect. I I don't know what I'm going to get. You still don't have a Kinect? No, I, I've, I've never How used How do you have an Xbox podcast? I don't have an Xbox podcast. Oh, don't you have like X? Oh no, that's your PS3 podcast. Exactly. No, I, I don't, I don't have a Kinect. Um, By the I, way, that is confusing. XMB, yeah, that's why it's kind of not doing anything right now. Is it really? It's dormant and has we haven't we haven't updated. Has it gone the way of uh, the PSP podcast? Yeah, I think so. I think focusing on individual consoles is going to be tough uh, moving mm-hmm. forward. So um, that's why there's the uh, these dudes on games show, which is uh, kind of a universal all future consoles type type show. So, but. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Connect. I don't. I don't own one. I I've I haven't really even used one. I mean, I saw a demo and oh, I kind of jumped in and oh, moved. How my... do you consider yourself a gamer? Well, I I we haven't picked up one of the hottest accessories yes. for this current generation. Yeah, I I know how to dribble a basketball already. I don't need uh I don't need a basketball dance game. But do you know how to do that. the kid and play? No. Uh, yeah. Do you know I, how to do the Roger I watched, Rabbit? I watched House the... Party. <laughs> you watched it, but can you pull it off? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I don't know. I I don't know. I'd like to pick up a Connect. I just don't know what games there are. I, I mean, it sounds like it would be something really awesome for the kids. Like they'd have a good time. They would. I, I don't think I would. You're being a horrible father by not giving it to them. Yes, I I spending three hundred dollars in Skylanders figurines is just a horrible thing for a dad to do. I should get well, them yeah, a Connect. Yeah, because you could if you get them a Connect, at least they'll be dancing or something. <laughs> they're dancing. They get up every five minutes to change their figures when they're uh, when they're having <laughs> battle modes. It's it's like they run a marathon. It's it's the weirdest thing. Now that you now that you mentioned that, it conjures up a whole other other realm of playing. Now that we saw a video that we we saw a bit ago, but uh, oh, but dude. Lloyd, what have you been playing? You know, I I've been uh, going. I I reset or I, I redid my my office a little bit, so you can see my bookshelf now is a lot cleaner. It has all my games kind of neatly organized. It's got some paraphernalia and some jet stuff and some figurines mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, so I I dig it. Um, but one thing in doing that, I. I, I found a bunch of games that I meant to beat and never actually got around to doing. So I'm spending the time right now uh, and beating a bunch of games. So I have Mass Effect 3 right now, or Mass Effect 2 rather, in my PS3 because uh, I want to pick up Mass Effect 3 and I want to complete like the trilogy. So I'm playing through I'm uh, probably all, uh, maybe, I don't know, eight hours to, to finish Mass Effect 2. So um, I got a lot of... Uh, lot of a lot of stuff done and just a few few missions and stuff left to do. So looking forward to beating that, um, which is really fun. I, I It's such an old game. I mean, it's been out for, what, four years or something or yeah. three years. So it's it's nothing new. It's nothing super fancy or anything. But what a great title. Um, I really, really dig Mass Effect. So I'm really glad that I got back into it and actually spent the time doing it. Uh, and also picked up a game called Fez for the 360, which is kind of like this uh, 2D uh, platformer with, um, 3D rotation built into it and like crazy logic puzzles. Oh, not puzzles. Fez, like the character from the 70s show. No, Fez, like the little thing that you wear on your head. Okay. And in this block world, the Fez gives you the power to see cubes. So it's not, you're not just on a flat 2D plane. You actually get to see the third dimension. So it's a, uh, it's a fun little title. Um, it was actually one of the games that was featured in the indie game, the movie um, movie. Did you watch it? Did you, uh, yeah. is it on down? Is it downloadable yet? No, I, I saw the premiere here in Winnipeg. It's actually by, by two Winnipeg filmmakers. Um, some, some, uh, some people I know here, uh, they, they basically did it and yeah, it's like, it's crazy. They're going worldwide. Um, they've been screening it all over the, all over North America. They have an HBO, um, TV series that was optioned, like all this crazy stuff. So okay. um, they're doing really, really well for themselves. But the movie itself, um, I, I love documentaries. Um, Netflix is kind of like my documentary viewer. Yeah, um, yeah. Most of the stuff I view there is all documentaries all, about all sorts of things. And I got to say, this is probably one of my favorite documentaries I've ever seen. Uh, just in like wow. the, the story they told, um, the emotional uh, journey that they take you on and stuff. And it's just like super bonus that it's all about gaming. But it's kind of like a King of Kong where you don't really have to be a gamer uh, or yeah. someone that knows anything about video games to enjoy it. Uh, Indie yeah. Game the Movie is the exact same way. It's uh, it's really great. If you have a chance to go see it, I sent you the link for the screening that was in LA. I, I guess you didn't go. But uh, yeah, but uh, it is so awesome. You, you guys got to see it. So uh, check it out. Hopefully, um, hopefully it'll be on uh, like DVD and downloadable uh, in the near future. They're uh, James and, and Lizanne are getting close to uh, making those announcements, I think. 
Cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing that. I, I've been uh, digging through um, my 3DS as well, uh, which just died, actually. I forgot to charge it, so it's on the shelf here. Um, but um, I've been digging through all my old NES games, playing through a bunch of those and the GBA stuff, all the free freebies that we got, and seeing, mm-hmm. do I really need to keep all these on my 3DS? So playing, like, deleting some of them, playing some of them, um, and, and basically just getting ready for some of the other games that are coming out. I've, I've kind of, I think I've run the run the course on Kid Icarus. I think I've gotten all the online multiplayer in that I can because oh, I, wow. I, I just basically spawn and die. So it's to the point where it's like, okay, people are spending all day doing this and I'm not... I can't compete, so... Um, so it's just not fun anymore? It's not that it's not fun. It's just that I, I, I don't think my skills can get much better compared to some of the people that spend all day playing this. So I'm giving it a break, um, going through some of my old stuff, uh, beating, like, uh, Sakura Samurai and, uh, and and some of the other games that I had downloaded. And, uh, yeah, enjoying it. I, I, I'm just waiting for, for, the, for the new... Uh, the new fresh batch of games that are coming out, like uh, Mario Tennis, uh, that'll be coming out soon in May, and mm-hmm. uh, looking forward to New Super Mario Brothers too. Um, I, I think that's going to be really awesome. So I'm uh, getting my 3DS ready and warmed up for those titles coming out. Very cool. Mm-hmm. But other than that, um, just my iPad. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of. What are you playing on the iPad, real quick? Uh, what am I playing on the iPad? Um, I downloaded. Uh, there's a game called Ascension. Uh, I believe it's called Ascension. Let me just double check that. Yeah, it's called Ascension, which is a um, it's a board game that has been redone as an as an iPad game. It's 99 cents, or at least it was when I bought it. Um, the board game itself is like 40 bucks, and it's a deck building game where you get a certain number of cards. And they have different things like um, they give you energy or damage. And if you damage a card, you get some bonuses. If you if you use energy, you can buy other cards that go into your deck. You shuffle your deck, mm. things like that. So it's 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 this it's this weird board game that I've always wanted to play. And the ability, or or just just the fact that I can actually download it for ninety nine cents and play it wherever I am on my iPad. Just I don't know. This device is it. I love it. I, I love iOS. How easy it is to play. Um, that spell sword. Um, there's a couple other games. Uh, Ballistic S, uh, SE. Uh, I guess it's special edition or whatever. A lot of games. There's so many 99 cent titles that just uh, make you want to keep playing games on on the uh, on the iOS platform. So, trying to spread my love amongst all my favorite consoles. So, I've been getting some iPad gaming in as well. All right, what's next? All right, well, let's take a break. Uh, let's talk to you guys about uh, go to meeting with HD faces from our friends over at Citrix. Uh, with colleagues working from home or traveling for business, getting everyone together these days for a meeting can be an impossible task. But I have the solution, and that is go to meeting with HD faces. Uh, your team can meet face to face while online, no matter where they are, and it takes only seconds. Um, go to meeting by Citrix allows you to collaborate on files and plans online. Uh, web design, you name it, whatever you want to do, uh, you're collaborating because you're showing your computer screen to the people that are on the other end of the computer. And with HD Faces, you just need a webcam to turn your online meetings into a group HD video conference. Uh, So now you can even participate on the go uh, because there's an iPad app that you can download for free on the iOS App Store and you can actually use the camera that's built into your iPad to jump into these HD Faces um, enabled meetings. Really cool stuff. Um, be able to see someone's face on the other end of the camera just changes it from someone sitting there nodding and and uh, and, and not really listening uh, to someone that's actually engaged with the meeting. So really cool stuff. Uh, I love GoToMeeting. I use it as much as possible. I wish I could use it for every online meeting. Unfortunately, all the the vendors I deal with at work haven't uh, they, they haven't seen the light yet. But I'm I'm working on them, trying to get them all switched over as well because it's such a better. Uh, it, it's the best um, product on the market to do this. So uh, you can start hosting your own face to face online meetings today with GoToMeeting. Just uh, visit gotomeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. And uh, do that, and you'll get a free 30-day trial. And uh, yeah, for the, for all the listeners of the show. So definitely go check it out. Go to gotomeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. And thanks to Citrix and GoToMeeting for the support of the show. Very cool. All right, man. Well, let's get into, let's get into news. Um, although in the in the show notes, it looks like it's in the wrong section, but that's okay. Um, I guess the biggest news item <clears throat> yeah. of, of I don't know, the last couple months has been this uh, crazy leak that happened. Um, I guess Ubisoft, somehow someone got a hold of their, 
I don't know if it's a commercial, if it's like a, a previs for a commercial they want to mm-hmm. release at E3, if it's something that they just made internal to kind of show off kind of the feel um, that they want for the advertising for this game. Um, but it's a commercial for uh, Rayman Legends for the Wii U. Um, I'll post a link in the show notes to a website that still has it. It was on YouTube, pulled down, people downloaded it, reposted it a bunch of times. It was got pulled down. <clears throat> this one's sitting on a different site, a different service. So hopefully it'll stick around for a little while. It doesn't work, by the way. It says like it has beta written all over it, and uh, it doesn't work for making. I it, at least it didn't work for me to make it full screen. Oh really? Yeah, it doesn't. It didn't work for me in Chrome. I could change it the different resolutions, but I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't make it full screen. Wow, that's weird. It worked for it me, was- but yeah, I, maybe they're maybe they're t- they're part way through a cease and desist taking that thing down. Uh, but anyway, so what Rayman Legends is, it's um, it's Rayman, the game that came out for PS3 and Xbox recently. Basically, it's uh, a, a 2D platformer with this really like crazy hand-drawn uh, graphics. Looks like you're playing in a cartoon. Um, the the, the um, 360 and the PS3, the graphics are, are pretty amazing. They look really, really nice. Um, the cool thing about this is it supports up to four players, I believe. Um, and you can you can you can play the game with with your friends, and it's a lot of fun. Um, then you you watch this video, and it takes those graphics that I've seen on my PlayStation Three, or not on mine personally, but going over to a friend's house and playing on PlayStation Three on a on an HD screen, and it kind of cranks it up a lot. I I know you've yeah. played you've played Rayman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played it, and I even played it a little bit on the Vita. Um, and right. it's a gorgeous, <clears throat> like pretty much any. Whenever Rayman gets released on the console, yeah. um, it almost sets a benchmark for uh, hand-drawn or animated. Um, it's not hand-drawn, but it's animated uh, right. 2D platformers. Yeah. Like I remember it being on the Jaguar and it looked amazing on the, on the Jaguar back in the day. That's, that's so impressive. every time it gets released, it always sets a new bar for really well-animated characters. Um, and it, it always looks really gorgeous and lush, very saturated colors. And everything just kind of pops on the game, right? Um, and it was no different when it came to the Vita, and the game just looks absolutely stunning on this demo slash teaser slash like I, I don't know what to call it um, yeah. because there are some really weird things about this little uh, video, um, and uh, the fact that Ubisoft got you know pulled it down so hastily. Um, it it seems to me, and and you you saw the fact that they kind of. It's 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 almost like they're almost not even acknowledging it. So Shane saying that this is just a prototype. This is not to represent actual gameplay. This mm-hmm. is not even to say that it, this is final and being worked on, but this is just a mock up, right? Of what it should be. Yeah. No. It's it, it looks really. I don't know. It. it, it it, it basically takes like the best Disney animation you've ever seen. Um, so like the, the hand drawn Disney animation and it kind of brings it to live on uh, to life on your screen. Like it, it looks, it looks really, really damn impressive. And I know you're, you're a Disney fan. Like you go there <laughs> yeah. all the time. So this must be even more awesome for you to see something. like oh, that. It looks amazing. It looks stunning. Um, and what was funny is before I even saw the trailer, I was like, well, how much better can it look than, games that we've seen but the animation is so damn fluid and so and the colors are so vibrant again like taking it up another level that it just um i almost had the same reaction when i played i think it was uh crunch time critters or something on the ps3 okay. like it's this little puzzle game that you could download and buy um and it was such a really pretty game and seeing this just uh, just is so 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 good just so good um now you think it's more of a render than actual gameplay, based on Ubisoft's reaction to the video. Yeah, like um, I don't know. When you look at it, there's some some weird. Thing. I'm trying to bring it up on my other screen so I can put it on mm. the on on um, the video for people who are watching this on on their screen. But um, yeah, it it looks it looks kind of odd. Like there's some things that aren't final. Like they're um they're they're using a a Wii a Wii U controller that is not wireless. So it's it's basically right. they're they're using a wired connector on it. Um, so obviously in the final version that wouldn't be there. So maybe they'll edit that little section out or whatever. Um, and there's some other things too, like on on the back of the Wii U um, controller, there's this little black port, and people are like, "What is that? Is that like IR? What is this thing?" Well, um, some developers that um, have been 
uh, basically working with the stuff before have basically anonymously said, well, that is the update port. So when you have a um, w when you have a, a development kit, that's how you actually update the um, the, the device. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, OK, well, that's nothing super fun and special then. Um, so it's like, no, all, and all it kind of leads you to believe that this was a mock up. Yeah, because totally. there's no way that they would actually put that in a real spot that they're going to air somewhere. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, it's just like, OK, well, what is it then? Is is it something that um, that 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 they want to have out? Is this something that they're working on? Um, the interesting thing was um, right after that, this um, that this actually um, came out. Um, a bunch of Ubisoft people came went on the record and said, yeah, like we have no idea what this is. Uh, we've never seen it. Um, we, we don't know what it's all about. Um, mm -hmm. Like they, they were basically just not really, they didn't really have much to say about what it is. So mm -hmm. um, it, it makes me think that if this was something that was going to be coming out at E3, that it would be um, something that everybody would know about. So maybe this is like a pre E3 thing that, that they're working on. It's not something that is, that was made just for E3. Maybe they're still working on it. Right. Um, but yeah, like I, I can't get the video on the screen, unfortunately, so I can't show you guys, but, uh, just go to the show notes and you'll be able to check it out. But yeah, yeah there's it, a, a, a couple of a key things that we, I think we noticed during the video is, uh, <clears throat> there is one scene where there's about four people playing. Yeah. Uh, three of them are actually characters on screen. And there's a fourth girl that has the tablet, and she's actually manipulating the level by touching the screen and changing objects on the screen that they're interacting in. Yeah, so you so have... at one point, uh, there's three of the characters, and she moves a plateau up so that they could jump yeah. to that plateau and then onto another area. Yeah, um, and, and it looks like the other three people are using like classic controllers, but she's yeah. using the tablet, and yeah, she just like touches the platform and slides it up, and it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. it, it it really kind of shows how um, the the vision for using the Wii U tablet, um, since you can only have one hooked up to the system, it's going to kind of change the way that multiplayer games work. One's one's going to be kind of like the mission controller, who's going to have more responsibilities than the people that are just using the ca class controller, for example. And so what was the aha moment in all this? <clears throat> well, you didn't watch right to the end of the video. I had to say, oh, so what did you think of the end? You're like, yeah, I kind of I, I kind of finished it. And like there was about 75% uh, watched and I kind of just canceled it. Yeah, it looks kind of good. Huh. And I'm like, dude, you got to go back and watch the end. Um, huh. Basically right near the end, they have um, this kid looks like he's in his bedroom or whatever. And he has a bunch of toys and he has this this tablet and uh, it's him going through the level. And then they, they look at the tablet and he kind of like reaches over and he picks up a, a rabbit and he kind of looks at it and he's like, oh yeah, Rayman, Raving Rabbits. Okay, I like that game. And he puts the rabbit character on the Wii U tablet, which is on the, the table. And you see like this flash and swirl underneath that character. And then it basically pans over to the TV where this is playing out and it actually shows a bunch of rabbits appearing in the game. So um, there's been rumors and it hasn't been confirmed officially, I don't believe, but there's been a lot of developers that said it's going to be there that um, the Wii U is going to support NFC, so which is that mm -hmm. near field communication. So uh, obviously, in in this, whether it's really happening or it's just like a previs or a mock up, the the rabbit character had some sort of NFC chip in it. When you put it on, it imported that character in the game, which I was just like, holy crap! But also other characters around. He had like an Altair character from Assassin's Creed, and he went and just just as he was about to go pick it up, it fade to black, and I'm like, oh yeah. crap! I want to see Altair in in Rayman Legends, that's going to be sweet. So yeah, I'm, I'm, or was it Ezio? I couldn't, I can't remember if it was, I think it was Altier. I think it was Ezio. Or was, it, was it? I couldn't, couldn't tell. I can't remember. I'll have to go back and watch the video, but it's one of the assassins anyway. And it's just like, holy crap, I want that in my game right now. And I want this and give it to me. I'm throwing my money at the screen. Please just give it to me. <laughs> but, uh, so what did you think? Did, did you, did, with that? I think that's going to be a hell of a way for them to, uh, for them to, for if I could put dollars on my tablet, and then it scans it and it disappears into the tablet, and that's how I give my, my account more money. I think that'd be pretty rad. Well, Nintendo or always could, always had a, a machine that printed money. This is kind of like the opposite of that. It's a machine that scans money. Sure, I mean, it could even scan your credit card. You just put your credit card in and just scan it, and then hey, that's something. they have your credit card forever. Don't give Nintendo ideas because they will do that. <laughs> Please insert twenty five cents to play oh, this man, to, so to continue. Do you want to bubble here? If you want to <laughs> bubble your character in New Super Mario Brothers, 
please put your credit uh, card on the, the tablet. The whole thing just looked. The whole thing just looked really, really awesome, and I'm I'm stoked for it. That's uh, um, I buy I buy <laughs> Rayman games once in a while, only because they've been kind of a a rehash. Mm-hmm. Um, they rehash the 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 um the game pretty often. So I don't buy the every Rayman, but uh, it's 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 a fun game, and if it if it looks as good as I. It, even partially as good as it does on this trailer uh, with some of these uh, gameplay aspects. This is definitely a must buy. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I fully agree. It, it looks, and, and this is someone that's pl- that played the PS3 and I was impressed with the way the PS3 looked. Um, this for ver- this version just looks so much better. Yeah. Of course, who knows what it is. Is this some render that someone did? Is this using like, is this like the original cell animation that they used as like a, Hey, this is what the game's going to be like. Who knows what that what the video is? Um, I mean, it could very well be exactly what they're showing. It could, and be. it could just be that uh, you know these are like basically you know if you're storyboarding something, <laughs> yep. you could shoot them you know with employees with the, and then eventually I mean obviously they have the gameplay footage and graphics, yep. so it's very easy to go okay this is what we want now X Y Z um, marketing department go shoot these shots yeah. uh, in the studio somewhere with these kids. Totally. That, that's, uh, because you don't want, what, what, was, what was that? No, I was going to say that that's exactly what it could be. It could just be, this is the previs. These are the um, kind of the placeholder of three guys and a, or th- yeah, three guys and a girl sitting on a couch having fun. Yeah, a, a black dude, <clears throat> an Asian chick and a white guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's all like, playing, how do we hit, how do we hit all the demographics? Let's get them all yeah. on the couch. Let's film this. Okay. And then we'll send it out to some at talent slash model agency to get like good looking people to sit here and, and look like they're are, having yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. They're not that good looking that you could peg them as models, <laughs> but good looking enough. Good looking enough. Yeah. Yeah, so I I don't know if if this is what the Wii U is going to be bringing out at E three. I I am I'm waiting for my mind to be blown repeatedly. I I really hope that this is real, and I really hope that this is how good the games can look. Like it, it that it is going to be this much of a powerhouse where they can have this sort of cell animated look, um, running like crazy FPS, um, super fluid and without any jaggies. Like it's just going to be beautiful. Here, it just seems to me like the video is very much gameplay. It doesn't seem like they would render like it seems like yeah. those all the different worlds that they were using uh don't seem like you know when when they're doing a trail uh, like a teaser mm-hmm. they render just specific characters on a white background or they'll render out one level but this just seems to me like very like snippets of a level it, and that that they're that there's something before and after it, you know. Right. It doesn't seem like a piece that they generated specifically for, or does it doesn't seem like fan generated. It doesn't seem like any of that. It mm-hmm. literally seems like this is a trailer. This was a commercial that they wanted to bring out, and they just needed to drop in the proper models and and people to act in it. Totally, yeah. So I, E three is going to be awesome. I cannot wait. Um, like but, even the did you see the dragon at the very first level? Kind yes. of like when it comes out, like. I watched it again, and it's even more impressive the second time because you're like, "Wow, this is really immersive," and I don't know why. I don't know why. And then you look at the, you watch it again, and you notice that the the wing flapped like in front of the screen, and then as it flew out mm-hmm. into like this, and it's like just so good looking. It's <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah, it's it's like watching Aladdin. Like it's that level of animation. It just oh, it looks so good. Really good. Okay. Well, right, why don't next? yeah? Why don't we move away from like Rayman stuff to get into actual some more Wii U rumors that popped up? Uh, sure. We're gonna we're gonna keep doing this until E three because then there'll be no more rumors because we'll know everything about it or at least most of it. So uh, the the big rumors that popped up this week that made me kind of either shake my head or go, oh yeah, that's kind of something that could happen. Uh, the first one up is that the Wii U is gonna ship with a little dongle that you carry with you to enable Street Pass. So you know how you bring your 3DS around and you street pass yeah. people? Yeah. The rumor is that <laughs> I don't believe this one, but the rumor is is that the Wii U will ship with this little dongle that you can pop in your pocket and walk around with you and you will street pass people as you pass by them. So That's dumb. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Something that Nintendo I, would do? I no, I don't I think I mean it's it's possible they've done really dumb things before. Well, they had the the Poka Pokemon battle collection or whatever, or whatever it was, or was it yeah. Pokemon Gold and Silver that came with a little pedometer? I think yeah, it was Gold and Silver. Yeah, but their whole point, if, but the whole, if their whole point is, is you know sell people 
on the 3DS and the Wii U. Why not make it so that the Wii U and, and the 3DS are attached somehow? Yeah, like that would that would make so much more sense. That make that would make total sense. You'd Why have, have a dongle? You'd have a channel or a icon or whatever they call it on the on the 3DS that mm-hmm. stores all your Wii U titles and mm-hmm. you Street Pass. And I don't that's know. It. So that one is probably on a scale of one to ten, a one of of likelihood. One. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, Walmart has apparently leaked um, the price of the Wii U. Um, they have they had some ads placed, uh, Google ads placed, and they're actually from Walmart, so it wasn't like some made up company that said, "Yeah, buy your Wii U at Walmart." It was an actual Walmart ad um, that, if you clicked it, brought you to Walmart's um, Wii section, I believe. And they had the Wii U up at three hundred fifty dollars, which is a lot of money. Um, the only reason why I kind of believe this one that it, that it's not just a doctored screenshot is that mm-hmm. Walmart was the one the one manufacturer the one uh, vendor rather that leaked the price of the Wii at two hundred fifty dollars before the announcement of what the price was. Um, oh, really? So I, I believe that three fifty could be an actual price, or maybe it was the initial price that was talked about. Whether it's going to be the right. launch launch price, who knows? So what do you think of that? So one? at one point it was probably actual. Yeah. I could see that. I could see a, a representative, like, a kind of offhandedly mentioning to Mr. Sam Walmart, even though he's dead, uh, hey, we believe it's going to be about 350 bucks, and then someone mocking up a website according to that. Mm. I could see that happening. Uh, and I see that, that price actually being realistic. I don't know if that's a good price for the Wii U, but I see it being a realistic price. And it's and it's even easier because um, it's just a Google ad, so they just had to have a Wii U graphic and some text. So it's not like they had to really work very hard to make this. So maybe right. someone was creating a bunch of ad units to put into whatever ad um, manager that they run, and they accidentally activated some um, pre to E three or whatever. Yeah, exactly. All right, so that one likelihood. Do you think it's going to be three fifty? Do you think it's going to be less? I think it could. I think it's really. I think, how about three three fifty? Such an odd number. Like yeah. it, it always they always la- uh, they always launch. It seems like in the round hundred area. I think the only one that launched at two fifty was the GameCube, maybe in the the, the N sixty four. The Wii was two fifty when it came out. The Wii was two fifty. So the two fifty seems more of a round number. Like yeah. I don't I, no no product has launched at three fifty. Well, no no console anyway. Well, you had the you had the PlayStation three that launched at stupid prices, and I think the. The yeah, astronomical prices, the, not three fifty. Exactly the the three sixty when it came out, I believe was three ninety nine. I want to say. Yeah. Um. So yeah, th- I don't know. I two ninety nine maybe two fifty would be better. I think two ninety nine. Three fifty is stupid. Three fifty is just a dumb number. <laughs> like just make it four hundred. There's that, and yeah. also the fact that you're asking someone to to spend three hundred fifty dollars on a console when the world is quickly moving away from consoles. Yeah. It seems like yeah. a lot to ask, so um, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm about halfway, maybe five out of ten on whether this is uh, a real rumor or not. Like you said, I think this is. Uh, I think at one point this is true. Like they're like, you know what? It's going to cost us three hundred fifty bucks to make it. Yep. And then they're like, okay, that's going to be the retail price. No, they may either up it to four hundred or they may bring it down to two ninety nine and lose on each one. Exactly, and that's because Nintendo never loses money on consoles. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Until we get to until, uh, some stories yeah, further yeah. down. Okay, yeah. uh, and the last rumor is that Nintendo is preparing their third parties for digital downloads on the Wii U and the 3DS. Um, they want to have a program that allows any developer that is releasing a disc-based game to um, basically bundle it up and release it as a digital download. Um, makes sense. I think that's totally 100% something that could happen. Absolutely, and that only kind of... Uh... It only uh, confirms that with some of the news that we heard uh, or that we're going to be talking about in a minute. Exactly. So uh, that one's a 10. I think that I think that is most definitely going to happen. And it has to happen if they want to stay relevant in the, the, new, uh, the new age of consoles Absolutely. that are coming up. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, moving on um, away from rumors, let's get into some actual cold hard facts. And that is uh, Nintendo had their earnings report. So they released the quarterly earnings report. There's a lot of a lot of earnings released around this time. You had Sony, you had AT and T, you had Verizon, you had um, Apple that made a crazy stupid amount of money, and you had Nintendo. Um, whoa, that was weird. Oh man, that was weird. Did you just hit a button on your Skype or something? I, no, I hit. A, yeah, I hit. Um, 
staring at the number two. Does that just make keep? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's weird. Oh man, whenever I say something, you say something I don't like. <laughs> You're just gonna be bleep me out. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, Nintendo released their quarterly um, earnings or losses um, f- for the f- fiscal year end. Um, ending March 31st. So Nintendo has never lost money since they've been a publicly traded company. So they've always made money. This is the first time that Nintendo reported a loss, and it's not a small loss. It's not like, yeah, we almost broke even. We we lost a a million dollars. So we screwed up. Well, we'll be better. They lost four hundred and sixty one point two million dollars in twenty eleven. Yeah, they they took a bath for a company that has never lost money for a company that for the last five years has been printing money with the Wii. Um, they they took a bath. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, they're basically saying that uh, there's some major issues. They had forecasted that they um, were going to sell, I believe, 15 million Wii's in the last quarter. Uh, they only sold less than 10. There were some other issues, um, but the probably the the most interesting one is that. Um, they're selling the 3ds, um, and and they're selling a lot of 3ds's, but they're selling them as a loss. And this is really the first time Nintendo's ever released a, a hardware product where they've actually sold it for less than it makes or than it costs to manufacture. Mm-hmm. Sorry, which is uh, a little bit odd. Something... It's, it's extremely odd. Uh, and like Lloyd said, we've never seen that before. And now, granted, when they first sold them, they were making profit, obviously. So it's only been as of the price drop, and they've been selling 3DSs hand over fist after the price drop. Yeah. Well, then that's um, – they still haven't said how much they're losing per, right? They haven't, but, I mean, they're selling a lot of them, and they're losing money. So um, they're, they're not selling enough software to make up the right. loss that they're, um, they're, they're seeing on the hardware. So um, they're, they're projecting, I believe, that they're going to be um, back in the black at, I believe – did they say March something? I'm looking for the date, but I can't find it here. Oh, I think it was no, March something. Um, March is it March or is it October? Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't have the date here, but they, they sometime next year. By, uh, yeah, next year, April first. There you go. So they they expect to be back to making money on all of the consoles by that time. So um, and that's millions of consoles between now and then. Totally, and, millions. And it sucks for them, but at the same time, it's also probably a really good thing because they'd rather have the consoles out there creating an install base than have them sit in a factory somewhere and no one's buying them. Like, you know what I mean? They want to have, especially when they move to digital downloads because, um, well, let's get to the next one. Um, Nintendo also announced that they're moving to uh, full retail titles um, that will be downloadable at the eShop with the first title being uh, New Super Mario Brothers 2. So, when that game comes out sometime in August, you'll be able to go to the store and pick it up at your local EB Games or uh, or Best Buy or whatever um, place you buy your games. Or you can actually go right into the eShop on release day and download it for the same price. Yeah. And yeah. store it on your, on your cart. Now, what's kind of crazy, and, and I'm not sure if you saw this part, but that what they're going to be doing is selling the, uh, the retailers like bundles of cheaper discount you know, a uh, wholesale price codes. Yeah. And when you buy it off of the eShop, it's going to be full price. So yeah. You could potentially get a cheaper price when you go and buy it at a retailer to keep them happy. That whole idea yeah. is they want to keep the retailers happy. Because they don't want um, the retailers to say, well, screw you. We're not going to carry any of your stuff anymore. And then people that don't have internet won't be able to get your games. So it's uh, it's quite the dance that you have all these game companies. Yeah. Like You see that happening a lot now with DLC. So people can go to EB Games and buy the the biggest or the next DLC pack as a code. Um, so uh, EB Games could put it uh, on a fake disc uh, cover, like Blu-ray cover or whatever, and say, yeah, get the latest expansion to blah. Um, so you can actually buy the DLC codes there. Uh, I guess that's what they're doing. Um, Nintendo's been toying around with that a little bit for some of the downloadable games. You can go to EB Games and buy like uh, um, Kid Icarus 3D uh, um, Remake. And you can go buy it for $8 there or spend your $8 to buy it from the eShop. So it makes sense, I guess. But I don't know. It just seems like really weird. Like if you're putting your stuff in the retail and then you're putting your stuff online well 
if you want to if you want retail to stock your game well then they'll stock the physical unit if you want people to be able to buy your game they'll just go on to the eShop and do it so it seems really odd that they're having dlc codes for for that game when it's going to be a physical disc as well yeah the same i price. think it's just a weird transitionary period <clears throat> where yeah. they don't want to lose the retailer but they they just don't have enough power one way or another to go okay we're not giving you this I mean, can you imagine if like the next big Mario game just wasn't on cartridge at all? Yeah. Which, you know, New Super Mario Brothers Two is is <laughs> essentially going to be that. Mm -hmm. um, except for it's not, it's not a console game, and it's not like the big, the big Mario game. Ex yeah, exactly. It's a big Mario game, but it's not like. Well, I think we've. It's not Galaxy before. Three. Like, it's not a Galaxy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, uh, but, but give it a give it a couple of years. I bet you, when the Wii U comes out, uh, you'll be able to buy games online day and date with the physical media. I, I think that's where all the, the all, all the manufacturers are moving. Yeah, and it's only a matter of time before you know EB or GameStop just <clears> the tank, the stocks just starts plummeting because there's going to be less and less reason to be going to these places unless you're doing used games, but. Especially if the new consoles start blocking out the whole used game section, yep. Like yep. it's gonna. What are you going? What are you going for? And, and and it's kind of like the way the market's going. Like, uh, can you can you go to any place locally and rent movies anymore or rent games? Like, right, right. Is is it does Blockbuster even exist anymore for you guys? I know. Uh, no, not really. We went to actually Betty and I stopped by a Blockbuster like <clears throat> two months ago that was going out of business across the street. It was yeah. one of the last ones in our area. Because they were selling everything, including like fixtures. So we were like, oh, I wonder if we could buy like any kind of furniture. So they, we went in and they were selling even like the, the display TVs, all the, <laughs> the DVD racks, wow. um, the candy, the candy racks. I should have went and bought it all and furniture. opened a video store. I mean, that's there's a good business in video stores. <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> um, um, that happened up here too. Uh, Blockbuster Canada went out of business and they were doing the same thing where you could go buy games. Like I bought... I bought a bunch of new and rental games for like seventy percent off what the retail price was. Uh, like it was mm. just stupid. I, I I bought like a stack like this of of media. Can't see both my hands, but it's huge. It's like probably about twenty discs, and it was like ninety dollars. Like it was just it was stupid. Um, and uh, we have another company up here called Rogers, which uh, was also a big rental chain up here in Canada. And they recently, like within the last couple of weeks, just basically said, "Nope, we're not renting anymore." So you go to the store one day and you could rent movies. You go the next day and all the rental movies were on the shelf with actual price stickers on it because they weren't renting anymore. It's like buy them, wow. um, and we're downsizing everything. So. Um, wow, that's I mean, there there isn't going to be a store anymore to go and and buy games. I'm surprised, I'm surprised GameStop GameStop <clears throat> stock hasn't plummeted. Yeah, well, you they're. Know, I'm really surprised because that, it's. Sorry, I was going to say they're they're divesting into online stuff as well. Like they have their uh, direct to drive stuff, so you can buy actual how, PC how games. How is that working though? Uh, who knows? I I don't know how well it's working. Like I, I don't know a single person who's ever bought a game that way. Um, yeah, no, people use like Steam or Origin, yeah. um, direct to drive apparently exists and I guess people use it, um, enough that they're still promoting it. But yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're at least being smart about it. They're trying to get ahead of the train, um, and, yeah. and not just stand there and let them, let them get run over. Um, but yeah, I mean, give, give it five to 10 years. I mean, there's probably going to be a lot of cities that don't have a game store anymore unless they have a used like mom and pop, um, not big like EB Games, super across the country brand franchise thing. Uh, they're just gonna be like the mom and pops. Like we have, um, uh, we have some some companies up here in Winnipeg that do that, where they they just sell old cartridges, and you can go there and buy a Secret of Mana for for SNES. That'll be the type of used games that you'll be buying because in mm -hmm. from this generation on forward, there's gonna be a lot less discs out there for you to buy. Exactly. Uh, one last bit during this earnings report, Iwata had said that we, Lou and I remember at one point they had said that we were going to know everything about the Wii U come before E3. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't seem to be the case. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like we'll be waiting till after E3 to actually get all the details. Yeah, and they said that they're not going to release that? pricing info at E3. They're Isn't that not going to. They're not going to tell you how much it costs. And the only thing that I can. Or the schedule, <clears throat> which is crazy. Yeah, the only thing I can read into that is that they're worried that. Um, Sony is going to pull out their copy machines again and take whatever Nintendo does and try to add like a, a different coat of paint on it and sell it as their own. 
So they don't want to let their cards out. But at the same time, you want people to be hyped up for your console. If you're not going to tell them how much it is, it's like, well, if it's $200, I'm super hyped. If it's $400, I'm kind of kind of cool. Maybe I'll go play it at, at Best Buy and see how it works. Yeah. So Yeah, it's just an interesting move that um that they're holding out yeah. still. So we're not going to know everything, unfortunately. Coming three, we're still going to be a little bit in the dark. There'll still be rumor yeah, reports still, to yeah. talk about in the show. Everybody's favorite thing. Yay. It's all a rumor. Yay, rumors. I hate rumors. All right. All right, moving What's on. Next? Well, um, a new uh, 3DS. I, I know it's your favorite color, so why don't you talk about it? All right. Okay, so I could totally imagine now Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> coming out as a Jedi with Zoe Deschanel following huh? behind him, with Zoe Deschanel as oh, following behind him as some oh, sort yeah. of Padawan Jedi thing, since they were both together in like those Apple commercials, that they've already worked together, kind of, I guess, in yeah, different they commercials. Totally have. Uh-huh. So they not together on the screen at the same time, but they probably met each other. Maybe they'll work together and uh, ha- and do a 3DS commercial. Yes, but I don't know why. He's, I guess why not? Zoe Deschanel's color maybe is purple. Could it be purple? I could be. I mean, she's she's cute, and, and purple's cute. So maybe that maybe it's, maybe it's purple. <laughs> so I guess Lloyd has a fascination with uh, Zoe Deschanel, and uh, Nintendo has a fascination with purple because they're coming out with a purple 3DS come May twentieth. Uh, same price as and 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 it's not just purple. It's midnight purple, and it's damn sexy if you like purple. Damn sexy! Can you send in your best Samuel L. Jackson voice? No, I cannot. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson just yells, so he would just be like, "It's sexy as hell." <laughs> I I can't. You'd you'd have to be pushing buttons on your phone if I started doing my my Samuel L. Jackson impersonation, <laughs> um, which we won't get into. Um, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, it looks kind of cool. Be, uh, it looks great. It actually looks good. It doesn't look. All that feminine. Yeah. Uh, it looks pretty damn good. It looks very goth. If you're a goth kid, are there goth kids these days? Or are they emo? What are they now? I don't know. They're 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 skinny pants dudes. Skinny pants dudes. If yeah. you're skinny pants dudes, uh, this is a, is that a thing? good I don't know. color for you. <laughs> May twentieth, uh, same day that you'll be able to pick up uh, Mario Tennis for the first time. So, yeah, I guess um, just more choice all around. Exactly. Not bad. Yep. And we've been asking for for new 3DSs the whole time. Like we've just been saying, give us new 3DSs. And Nintendo listened, and they gave us a purple one. Yeah, even though taking a loss on each one, they decided to give us another yeah. coat of paint on yeah. them. And you know, it cost ten cents more for that purple paint. So it probably did. It's it's more. You look at in Japan, and they have all these like really awesome like custom design ones, and we get purple. I know. I don't know. Yeah. Nintendo fail. <laughs> All right, moving on, uh, another big uh, E3, or pre-E3 announcement, or at least it's kind of big. Um, Sega is still kind of a company, um, even though they're not they're not doing so well uh, as of late. And they've announced that um, <clears throat> the next iteration of the Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing franchise, which is still the stupidest name that has ever been made, uh, yeah. I think. Um, they're coming out with the next version. It's called Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing's Transformed. And it's heading out to the 3DS. Um, so it's going to be on a bunch of different consoles. But it was confirmed that it is going to be 3DS. And it's coming out to the 360, the PlayStation 3, the Vita, the 3DS, and um, yeah, PC in, in the future as well. And basically this is um, a racing game, like the kart racing game, like Sonic uh, and Sega All-Star Racing. Um, but they've kind of copied uh, Mario Kart a little bit because there's boats and uh like it looks like there's hovercraft and there's all sorts of awesome other vehicles that you can transform into so not that they're copying mario kart of course because sonic would never copy mario i mean that's just oh no like them. sony isn't copying smash brothers uh, no no did you saw that eh? that i don't know you saw that ah oh, that was awesome you saw that eh? i was gonna <laughs> did what i are say you talking hey? about what, what are you talking about what are you talking about <laughs> Let's go get some poutine, buddy. Would you like ex- oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> I knew you were gonna go there. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know about that one. It, it I, I want to play it. It looks really cool. The fact that you have like characters from every single like big Sony franchise, but yeah, it's just like Smash Brothers did that. Can you not come up with a better idea than that? All your yeah, mascots fighting each other game too, right? There's a Mario Kart esque type from. From, from Sony, Sony oh, they had yeah. the Mod Nation Racers, which no, not another one. I thought it was another one. Really? 
with all of yeah. the with all of the mascots. I Mario Kart. Let me see if uh, I could find it again. Okay, well you're looking for that one. Uh, that's that's it for Sonic and Sega. I wanted to mention it because I know there's a lot of Sonic fans out there, and there's actually a lot of Sonic fans that love Nintendo as well. It's kind of really kind of weird because um, you think that if you're a big Sonic fan, you're like pro Sega and you you never wanted to own a Nintendo console. But I guess since there isn't Sega consoles, you kind of have no other choice. Um, last but least. Uh, I don't want to say not least because this is most definitely least. Um, Nintendo announced that new play control Pikmin 2 is coming out. And you're going to say, what? Didn't that come out three years ago or whatever? Um, but no, it did not come out three years ago. It came out three years ago in Japan and Europe. But for some reason, it never made it here. Um, but it's going to be coming uh, before the end of the year to the Wii. So if you have a Wii... And you want to play Pikmin 2 uh, before Pikmin 3 comes out on your Wii U, that will finally be possible. So, yeah, it's a thing. There you go. Dumb. Dumb. I don't... Isn't it, like, too little too late? Like, why would you sit on a game... Why would you sit on a game for three years? Like, Nintendo does that. They'll have games that are fully completed, and they just keep them on the shelf until they, they deem that this is the release window and release them. This obviously is that, and it's just like, did you forget? Like, did it fall like between two desks, and you just like, you just forgot? Like, the gold master fell between like intern one and intern two's desk, and someone, yeah. some janitor came and said, "Hey, what's this?" and brought it out, and they're like, "That's Pikmin two. We should have released that." And stop the presses. Put this on the presses. I, I could just see something like that playing out. Stop it's... the presses. Put this on the presses. Is well, that what, what they say? What else would you say when you're pressing discs? I guess I that in my in my brain that's what they say. I don't know if that's real, but I, I think it is. Um, almost certainly that's what they do. Cool. So yeah, um, a Wii game that was supposed to come out three years ago was finally coming out. How ridiculous is that? Who still? Now, okay, let me ask you this: Do you still own your Wii? Yeah, I do. I am very close to selling my Wii at this point. Well, why? I don't have anything to play on it. I haven't turned it on in months at this point. But you have all these old games that you purchased. Why don't you want to keep them? Uh, I would you, probably keep the games. Are you just and assuming that the I Wii know. U is backwards compatible? Is that what you're I'm sorry? hoping? Are you, you're just hoping that the Wii U is going to be back, backwards compatible? I, I wouldn't see why it wouldn't be. I, I don't know. I would hope so, but you see a lot of consoles that are doing away with that now. Like The, the rumors for the next 360 and the next PlayStation are uh, that there's no backwards compatibility at all except for downloadable titles. I would be very upset. So, yeah, I don't know. Oh, man, does that wrap it up? I think so. That was a long show. Uh, we did we uh, did an hour of pre-E3 news, and you, you did an hour of lounging. So you got your lounging, and you, you, oh, you stanked up that chair before you sold it. I did, and I don't even have to go to sleep now because I'm very well rested after this podcast. You were napping throughout the whole show. I, I noticed all the yawns, <laughs> and, and, and your eyes were like closing. You had like the toothpicks out, prop open your, eye, your eyelids. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Glad someone's paying attention on this podcast. Then. Exactly. All right. Well, that's going to about do it for the show. So, guys, head on over to the forums. Uh, get chatting. As, as I said, I want to run a contest uh, throughout May. Going to be giving away some some iTunes cards. Uh, if you don't have an iTunes account, uh, maybe I can look into some Nintendo points or something, uh, depending on who wins. Uh, so, head on over to vgpodcasts.com slash forums and get chatting uh we want to get some some communications happening there and uh, you guys chatting about all the different uh, shows on the network uh head on over to vgpodcast.com and click contact us if you want to email us you can email us directly at vgpodcast at gmail.com why don't i put some music on oh why don't i why don't i, why don't I make a beep sound that'd be even better yeah more oh, beep sounds. another one more beep sounds That's awesome. what the hell it's the that mixer. So good. It's the mixer. That's what it is. Oh man, the system <laughs> said no, no, <laughs> no. We're not. No, stop no. it. No, 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 no. 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 Oh, I was gonna make it beep again. Now I can't even make the beep happen when I want to. Oh, there we are. There, we go. <laughs> there you go. Oh uh, yeah, head on over to vgpodcast.com. Email us at vgpodcast at gmail.com or call our voicemail line, which is area code five zero five. VG podcast. Uh, I apologize for any sound difficulties or my slurring of words. I have a very, very bad sore throat that I'm getting over. Hopefully, I'll be better for the next show. Edgar, thanks for joining me again, man. Sure, no problem. I like this new lax, uh, cool, just kind of chill Edgar. I ain't complaining. Compared to awesome. Red Bull and jump around and stand up at your at your stand up desk, Edgar. 
Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I kind of it's got all good depend on depend on my mood, I guess. Which one I use? <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for joining us and staying subscribed. S- subscribed. Subscribed. I gotta I gotta go to bed, man. Yeah. All right. Talk to you guys next week. Take it easy, guys. Later.